So this first one here comes to us from Stephen Norris. Um, and he asks, he says, reporters regularly ask the White House staff about the confiscation of assault weapons and semi-automatic firearms, as if that's a reasonable option to curb gun violence. Is there any chance that gun confis confiscations could actually be enacted from the federal level? And does the federal government have any authority to legally or to take legally obtained firearms? And what protections are in place for legal gun owners to prevent this? Hmm. Uh, so what do, yeah. what do you think there? That's a good question. Um let me let me lay out, I guess, the nightmare scenario for uh, this. Uh, if you're someone who owns a gun that that would be targeted in a potential assault weapons ban and confiscation effort, uh, which, by the way, the the president has not come out and explicitly supported any sort of mandatory buyback. He his position has been to want uh, want to ban sales and then register all of the currently owned ones. I'm sure that's not much of a uh, comfort to to people oppose this policy, but that that's his stated position. He was uh, his, the press secretary was recently asked about whether he supports uh, confiscation and uh, didn't say no. So that is another thing where it's like probably not very comforting uh, to to many gun owners the way that the president's messaging has been on this issue. But um, the nightmare scenario, I guess, would be. The president wins re-election and wins majorities in both houses, and it's on. It's exceedingly unlikely that he'll be able to get to sixty votes in the Senate um, among Democrats. You're probably not going to have sixty Democratic senators after this cycle. This cycle is pretty favorable towards Republicans in terms of who's up for re-election in what states uh, in the Senate. So. If he wins re-election, he's certainly, well, it's almost guaranteed he'll carry the House, and so Democrats will have control almost certainly of the federal government again. But um, the real concern you would have is that they pick up a couple of seats, you know, 54, 55 Senate seats. Then the filibuster may be on the chopping block. It's entirely possible. Um, the only thing that's kept them from going down that path have been a couple of, at least publicly, you know, we, we don't know exactly what goes on behind the scenes in the Senate. And oftentimes you'll see a senator sort of put forth as the, the one person blocking some unpopular thing uh, when really many of their colleagues also don't want to do that thing. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not outside the realm of possibilities that the filibuster could be eliminated and then they could pass through a bunch of... Um, different policies, including an assault weapons ban and maybe confiscation or mandatory buyback that has become increasingly popular on the Democratic side of the aisle. Uh, certainly not. It's not something that I could see a lot of the more moderate Democrats in the Senate going for, but um, uh, it's not impossible, I guess, is what I would say. I don't know. What, what do you think on the the feasibility of this. Does that, does that sound like a scenario that could happen to you? Yeah. You know, and especially in the near to medium term, I don't foresee that being a federal policy. Uh, I know obviously that's stays on the sort of the forefront of gun owners minds here, because you look at, mm -hmm. and, you know, other Western countries have instituted very similar policies. The famous example yeah. obviously is Australia after the mass shooting in the mid nineties, where they did a mandatory buyback of all semi-automatic weapons. Uh, Canada right now is is sort of it's it's been a prolonged process because it's a lot harder than I think the government initially understood. But they are yeah. technically instituting a mandatory buyback of quote unquote assault weapons. So obviously, this, people look around and see that these policies are going on in other countries. But as you said here, just the political realities at the federal level, it's very tough to imagine one the Democratic Party having the numbers to get something like this through, and two having sufficient moderate Democrats who may be willing to ban the sale of assault weapons, but right. I think would be hard pressed to come down and vote for a mandatory confiscation effort. So I don't really see I mean, it happening. Yeah. I, I mean, I think even an assault weapons ban on like a sales ban would be hard for them to get to, uh, even if they do recapture everything, even without a filibuster in place, because right. Uh, it's a very unpopular policy in a lot of these states that these senators would be coming from, uh, you know, and it's not it's actually not a very popular policy at the national level either. It's as we've documented the last couple of years, the support for 
and assault weapons ban. Uh, and, you know, assault weapons, that's a very nebulous term, as we've discussed before. It's the definition varies from state to state on what constitutes an assault weapon under these bans. Um, generally speaking, they're trying to target things like AR-15s and AK-47s, although usually the definitions go well beyond just those rifles. Uh, but, uh, you know, these are very popular firearms in a lot of these states that these senators come from. And this is a, there's a reason that the Senate never took up the assault weapons ban that the House passed, right? I mean, it wasn't because Republicans stopped them. Uh, Democrats had control of the body at that point. They didn't want to take that vote. I mean, that's just the bottom, the, the reality of it. Um, it was hard to get, it was hard to get it passed in the House where Democrats had control and the House is, you know, um, bare majority vote. So, uh, you know, it, it's just, it, it, there has been a sort of renewal of interest in assault weapons bans among, you know, your deeper blue states in, over the last two years here, somewhat surprisingly to me. I mean, I had written that this, that the era of assault weapons bans was over, right? Uh, and now we're seeing a bit of a resurgence. I think you've written, though, that, uh, and I agree with you, that this is probably more of a sort of, uh, it's probably more of a phenomenon of the the fact that these are unlikely to survive constitutional scrutiny in the, in the near term. They're probably going to be struck down. And so you're seeing some rally to this uh in a way that you see with policies that are unlikely to go into effect, um, you know, that's that's why you'll see like a lot of symbolic uh, legislation that'll get through in circumstances where there's it's never to have going to have a chance of actually becoming law. And then when the same lawmakers have a chance to pass that for real, oftentimes it doesn't actually happen. Right. Yeah. You know, hopefully that makes sense to people. There, there's a sort of there's a sort of period where you, people are politicians are much more comfortable sending, you know, doing symbolic messaging b bills than they are being actually responsible for passing things that may end up being unpopular. Um, and I think that might be what we're seeing here, or at least part of it. Uh, but as far as protections from this possibility go, I mean, I think it's just kind of the Second Amendment would be the the bottom line uh, when when you're talking about confiscation of popular firearms, or even just sales bans of popular firearms. Um, there isn't really like a, there's, I don't know that there's a federal law that says you can't confiscate, you know, there might be some federal law that says, oh, mass confiscation is illegal. But it's, if they can pass a law that says, we're going to confiscate the guns, they can repeal whatever federal law might be in place uh, to that effect. And so you're, you're more, uh, likely to see the, the Constitution itself, the Second Amendment itself, be what would protect uh, gun owners in this scenario. Because I mean, you've already seen the court signal, at least, that bans on AR-15s are not constitutional because they granted, vacated, and remanded the Fourth Circuit's uh, decision upholding Maryland's assault weapons ban. And that's now that's still going through the courts, but it, it implies that they don't necessarily agree with the outcome of that. At the very least, they want them to go back through under the new Bruin standard and do the case over again. Um, to me, that implies that they they don't agree with the previous outcome of upholding that law. So uh, we'll we'll see uh, where I think really the action is going to be on the state assault weapons bans instead of a potential federal, like the nightmare scenario I laid out, I do not think is a very likely scenario to happen. It's not impossible, um, depending on how poorly or well the Republicans do in this next election or Democrats and vice versa, like how that all comes out could determine a lot of things, but I don't, I don't think it's super likely that you would see an assault weapons ban on sales pass at all, uh, let alone, go to the next step of actual confiscation. Right. Yeah. No. And just to you know, put a fine point on that, that here where I'm at in Colorado, uh, an assault weapons ban at the state level is a live proposition. And it's mm -hmm. very, it's a deep blue state. Democrats have trifecta control of all ever, levels of government. And even they in that bill were initially going to go for a possession ban, which is 
essentially gun confiscation. And even among almost supermajority Democratic control, they stripped that from the bill because that was too controversial for their members to even be associated with at the introductory level before it even was time to take a vote. So that just tells you sort of where the politics are on the confiscation yeah. end of things and why it's probably unlikely. And that ban is seems like it's probably not going to pass, even the, just the sales ban in Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very uncertain, to say the least, uh, whether or not it'll make it through. While, while you know, five other gun bills have sailed through the, the legislature, yeah. this assault weapons ban is kind of you know, stuck in place right now. Yeah. It's definitely harder to do hardware bans um, than it is to do other forms of gun control uh, from what we've seen over the last five or 10 years. 